Hello everyone. In this session, we'll create a web page consisting of a drop-down list and few um, text fields. Uh, we'll fill the drop-down list uh, with the primary key attribute of a table stored in MySQL server. And after selecting a particular value from that uh, drop-down list, the corresponding record will be searched in uh, MySQL server and that will be displayed in the text field. So the table uh, which I'm using over here is of the table named uh, employee. This table I have downloaded it from Kaggle and the various fields of this table includes ID, employee name, title, base pay, overtime pay, other pay and total pay. Of this uh, ID field is the primary key and the page which we are going to design will be of something this sort. Now here is what we are having the drop down list uh, we'll fill this drop down list or we'll populate this drop down list with the field id and thereafter selecting particular uh, id let's consider we select id as 5 then this record will get displayed in this text field okay so let's start with the code so the editor which i'm using is vs code you can use any of the editor of your choice uh, my root folder is php tute okay so first thing is uh, I will go to my local host and check whether it's working yes it is working and then if I look into uh, this file named php tute uh, now this directory is empty we don't have anything so let's start with this to now this uh, root uh, directory or the parent directory I add one file uh, and I name it as employee.php now this file uh, if we just try to open it it will be empty because we haven't written anything but uh, on this file we want uh, the output something like this one text uh, drop down list and uh, five uh, text fields so let us add that we can look back to the code over here let me rearrange and anyway these are your html components so in the body it's we'll add the form and then we'll add the table uh six rows and two columns so first row uh, let's add two td fields so let's create the skeleton first first row second row third row fourth fifth and sixth okay now uh, let us fill the uh, first column and let us say we want to display the select ID employee name basic pay something all these things in bold letters so we'll use a strong field strong here we write select employee ID okay select ID would have been better no issues then second one is here's employee name then uh, basic pay strong basic pay then next uh, in strong after basic pay it's over pay then after over pay it's others pay so in strong other pay and last it's a uh, total salary so let it be in strong uh, total salary okay so let me save this and refresh the page here we go okay this employee okay I'm, i think i missed strong over here no issues so let it write on as uh, strong and uh, let me cut and paste over here okay now let us first add uh, before adding this uh, drop down list let us add uh, uh, some text fields first because those are a little bit uh, easy to add okay so we add that from employee so input type is text name let it be emp name and uh, id as emp id let us say size of this field let it be 
40 okay then in basic pay uh, input type is text a uh, name let it be basic and ID also basic now it's always better to have the uh, name and ID same because once you, uh, your page becomes bigger uh, so it consists of a number of components so if you keep uh, ID is gonna definitely is gonna be unique only but if you keep a name and ID unique so if we move across the pages no so at that time it becomes uh, easier to uh, remember which component we are accessing okay then uh, okay size 20 sufficient I copy this and I paste this a uh, for overpay same thing for other pay and total salary so now let me change the name for overpay let me see I keep the name as over and I keep the same for ID now for other pay let it be other itself and let me see I'm keeping the same ID other and for total salary let me say the field name is total and here also total okay we haven't added uh, this drop down list we'll add it soon so let's refresh this yes it's coming now uh, let's add that uh, select field uh, select field will be in the first row now to add the drop down list the component what we have is select so let's consider uh, name is EMP ID and ID also the same EMP ID let's consider uh, one dummy uh, a value we are adding over here value is null but here we'll write say select ID okay no value is assigned but this is what it will be visible now there is a difference over here okay but uh, if I say something like this I remove ID uh, from here and I put it in select ID let me say I'm keeping it blank now this select ID won't be visible okay but there's something or this blank has some value that value is nothing but your uh, select ID no, not sell yeah that's what the value of this blank select ID so we'll just keep it blank only right now because uh, we want something to be get displayed when, when the page loads uh, at that time in this drop down list let me say if I'm this loading this page here with this select ID and then all your IDs will be added to this okay now going back we are fetching ID from our database so we require one connection object then using that connection will fetch the record now whenever the record is getting fetched it's fetched in the form of an array okay or that data is getting stored in the form of an array and then we will uh, scan that array and take the required field all right so first uh, let us create the connection and for connection it's always better if we create one another uh, file through which we are going to handle our database so let's consider name of that file is db connect okay uh, now here I will create a connection object and we'll send that connection object to our employee field okay now that uh, connection object will be created but it's always better if we uh, create that uh, in a function and uh, if everything goes good then that connection object will be sent to the uh, calling program so what I do I create one uh, function let's consider name of this function as dbcon and over here uh, let's create that object name of the object let us consider connection and we create connection by using mysqli underscore connect now this connect it take four parameters first name of your server its name of server over here is localhost all right uh, then uh, your username username over here is root then the password my dummy password over here is this and finally name of your database so if i show you my database just a second let me add it uh, name of my database is php tute let me open this server over here name of my database is php tute and the table is employee and the field which you are interested in is id okay getting back over here uh, so what we'll do uh, if everything goes good 
will return uh, this object of connection type now going back to your employee field employee page uh, at the start let's add this uh, php tag and let us include this file file is a db connect dot php and we are going to call upon the function dbcon now this function is returning one object of connection type so let us say we create another variable let uh, now this variable con uh, is a local variable of this page so con equal to dbcon so the connection object will be sent and now uh, let us have your query so query is we want to select id only we will write select uh, id from table employee okay and uh, if this query is proper then we will fetch the record set by using mysqli underscore query when we want to fire the query we use mysqli underscore query now this query is going to take two objects one is connection object and second one is your sql query and this is going to send you one record set okay so let's consider we say that record set in a variable named result okay now this result is basically it's in the form of an array only it's a single dimensional array what you are going to get is only the uh, id field now from this we'll uh, or we'll scan this record set row by row will fetch the value row by row and add it to your option tag of your uh, component select so for that we'll use again inside this select uh, we'll use a ph oh, wait a minute something wrong okay we'll use a php tag okay uh, we are going to fetch result uh, row by row so it goes like this while let's consider i'm using one dummy variable named uh, rows accepted equal to mysqli underscore fetch how we are going to fetch in the form of an array what's that result the result is stored in variable uh, result itself okay uh, let us say we are storing that in one dummy variable k uh, the value of uh, field id okay and then we'll save this uh, or we'll add this value a variable k across both uh, value field as well as the outside field okay so what we'll do we'll embed this option tag using echo function okay so echo uh, let me maximize this echo uh, tag is option value equal to we need to write the value in double quotes okay so double quotes and after that you write down dollar k then complete double quotes okay and then uh, close this tag then outside that uh, outside this option tag before closing it we need to write the value of k also that is select id part so dollar k and then you close your option tag Okay. this looks a little bit uh, confusing but uh, with the mere practice once or two times uh, once you practice this it will be a little bit simpler so now let me check whether it's working first oh i think there's some error now in php uh, it's very difficult if you get something uh, like this where the error is actually what's the error so in that case we want something to get displayed so uh, at the start of the page you can include one statement uh, as uh, initialize errors so initialize and i set here display errors uh, display errors and you set that value to be one so whatever the error we may have over here that uh, error will be displayed so let me first let me check what was the error have i missed something else uh can't say right now mysqli underscore connect localhost 
the root username password okay i'm returning this con object uh, let me display what's the error is oh it went i do not know what was the error but uh, i just refresh the page and i got the connection okay if at all let's consider something like this uh, i write uh, con one i make uh, intentionally make create an error okay so at this time it will show me the error kya hai karte hue so this is the error what it is showing undefined variable dollar con co one something like this so if it happens that uh, you are stuck somewhere and you are not able to get what's the error is because nothing is getting disabled then on that page what are the page you are using it uh, you set error message equal to 1 okay by using this initialize set display error is 1 okay so right now what i will do i'll just uh, remove this error and refresh the page okay so we are getting everything over here but right now nothing is happening uh, because i haven't uh, related any event or function that should uh, or executed after i change or select anything from this drop down list now for that we use on change function i'll go to this uh, option not option the select and another attribute of this is on change on change what should happen so let's consider on change uh, i want to call upon a function named uh, fetch emp so fetch emp okay so this is a function so i want to call upon this function now this function i should describe it in uh javascript oh okay uh, either i can have a external uh, javascript file or else i can use within a i will just create one script inside the same page and use it but it's always better that you uh, have your script in separate file that is external script so what we will do we will create one folder over here named as js okay so this js folder will have all the scripts whatever we require it Now inside this, I will create another file named uh, emp. dot js. So emp. dot js is my JavaScript file, and here the function which I want to use is uh, fetch emp. I hope the name is proper. Uh, fetch emp. Let me copy this, and uh, where is my file over here? Okay, fetch emp. Yes, name is same and let's consider uh, here let's check it whether this is getting proper or not we just write uh, hi oh hello <coughs> this function will be call upon once we change something from our uh, drop down list but we need to have some relationship between this page and this uh, emp.js file so uh, within the head tag we add that uh, script source Uh, source is within js folder we have one file name emp.js so i uh, let me save it let me reopen the page and uh, refresh so let me check if it is getting called yes hello is getting displayed okay but anyways we are not interested in getting uh, displaying hello over there uh, we want after selecting this value what should happen uh, corresponding record should be fetched okay so going back to this file again Now, very first thing what to require is we need to fetch the value of whatever we have selected from our drop-down list. So let's create one variable named id, and let that id be equal to something as uh, document dot get element by id. We want to fetch that value, no? We want to fetch the value from this drop-down list. But uh, what is the id of that drop-down list? Whenever you are using a, a script, we require the name of your id. Okay, and name of this uh, select uh, is id emp id okay so document dot uh, get element by id uh, id is emp id uh, dot value we want the value part and let's check whether this is working out so alert on id so let me save and uh, refresh okay thank you Yes, I have selected three, so three is getting popped. A value is getting preserved. So let's consider I go to seventeen. Yes, value is seventeen. Uh, let me go for once again. Yes, but if I uh, just go for select, 
we don't have that select uh, whatever is written there it, the value is null because if we check into the code we haven't given any value thing over here so that's what's coming anyway we use that so that uh, something is selected okay now going back to this now uh, here what it comes a part of your ajax and jquery we will be passing this value uh, of id as a parameter to another file okay and in that file we'll fetch the record we'll fetch the record from our database okay so let us consider something like this we want uh, the record of uh, id 5 what query will give will give query something like this select id from employee where uh, id equal to 5 oh not id let me say select a star from employee where id equal to 5 so this record will be fetched and now this fetched record should be sent from the other file to this main page main page is what employee after getting that then that record or whatever the values of that it should be uh, displayed or added to these fields so here is what comes part of your ajax query we will refresh only the part instead of refreshing the complete page okay now that ajax not to use ajax query we need to use some apis okay uh, so we use jquery uh, i think the latest one is 3.6 something like this so let us first cross check with this part uh, hit the Google and just write down uh, download uh, jQuery download jQuery okay so uh, here you can uh, just op open this on this go to this jQuery page there are the two ways either you copy the complete uh, source for example let me just open this and write a new page uh, either I can copy this complete code and uh, save it in uh, one another JS file okay and i use that as a source or else what we can do here we can use directly on shortcut if you just scroll down you should get something external links or the cdns okay here we go we have for a google cdn just open in new tab you will be getting the uh, links over here and oh yeah this is the latest one uh, 3.6 so let us say i just copy this okay and uh, i will use uh, i'll paste this script in a header you can keep us uh, place it anytime okay okay so i have now a link uh, directly to that script i have uh, the uh, google api over here and the javascript vi which you are using is or jquery which we are using is 3.6 now going back to this part now here we'll use ajax query now uh, that ajax query it goes something like this dollar uh, dot ajax open bracket and now your attribute starts now the very first attribute over here is uh, url okay i will give the name of that url something now th this is the uh, page which you are gonna to call upon okay uh, and to that page you will be passing some values uh, that page or in that page will be fetching the record and will send that record back to our uh, page called employee so let's consider we create one page named as uh, uh, fetch uh, employee okay fetch employee dot php so let us consider uh, this is my page okay so let me copy this url url is the name of that uh, file okay then second parameter is method how you want to uh, pass the parameters so let's consider it's always uh, better if we go with post thereafter what you're gonna do pass what data you want to pass to that file so that is nothing but your data 
and data is uh, employee id or this id which we are gonna to pass so let's consider i'm keeping the same name id okay and then the last uh, attribute of this no not last uh, how uh, now thing is happening over here that you want data back you want a record back from uh, that page and display it on your page now that data type will be of type json data type uh, json oh data type json and uh, if everything goes good so we use success function success function and let's consider we use some data whatever that's going to get reflected over here let's consider name of data is data itself okay and let us first check what uh, data is going to get uh, displayed uh, so instead of directly uh, displaying it on uh, uh, these uh, components let's display it in the console console.log uh, data let's check whether it's working properly okay uh, i repeat this once again uh, we are using ajax query uh, it's a simple ajax query now this ajax query consists of, of three parameters uh, first parameter is nothing but your url that means the location or the uh, where you want to call upon that file uh, second is the method how you want your data to be passed and third is data data is nothing but uh, uh, how many what are the parameters you want to send those so these are basic three parameters now thereafter uh, when uh, the data is getting uh, sent back to your uh, page how you want that data so let's consider basically we use json data type so we'll go for data type json uh, there are two uh, functions over here one is success and second one is failure so basically we'll go with success if everything goes good then we call upon function name of that function itself is function <coughs> and uh, you can have anything so data you can have xyz anything it's just normal name and whatever that data is getting uh, passed from here uh, so uh, we will use uh, that data to display whatever it is so we are using console console means over here if you on the page if you just go on the inspect in inspect there is one tab called console so whatever uh, the data is there it will get displayed over here but anyways we don't want to anything to get displayed over here this is basically used for debugging purpose uh, we'll uh, we want final answer to get displayed over here so getting back to that page so now we are coming to a page where we have uh, received the data so again in the php tag first uh, as uh, we are done in the first page what we'll do we'll first get the connection object then uh, we'll create a query then we'll execute that query and after execution that query the result will be set i'm saying about this thing first we'll get the connection after connection we'll create uh, one sql query after sql query we'll fire that query and we'll get the uh, result same thing we'll do over here first so what i do let me just see i will just copy this because again these are the same steps okay only thing what's changing over here is uh, it's not select uh, id from employee but it will be select star from employee where id equal to now what is that id now that id is uh, stored in one parameter name of that parameter is id which you are passing from here okay so that id uh, okay instead of saying id uh, everything remaining same uh, let me change the name of this variable so let's consider the name of this variable as x okay so where employee id is x but how to fetch the value of x so to fetch the value of x let's consider we create one temporary variable uh, k uh, will fetch that by using dollar underscore post and in double quotes uh, oh no, uh, even single quotes will do um, I should do uh, if not then we'll look into it x 
okay name of parameter is x so id equal to dollar k okay then <coughs> we know that this is fetched in the form of a array so now we'll go with like this while dollar rows equal to my sqli underscore fetch array and what's that it's the variable a result okay i'm keeping the same uh, para variable name except because here a result and rows these are local for this file employee we have the same uh, name in the file called uh, employee.php now these result and rows what are we have having over here these are local variables okay okay now going back we want to fetch the record we have got everything uh, from let's hope uh, this uh, uh, query get executed so after executing what will happen are uh, this part will come up so we require some separate variables to store upon id employee name okay id is not required employee name job title uh, are we displaying job title over here uh, no okay good thing so we require some different variables to store uh, employee name base pay overtime pay other pay and total pay so correspondingly what we'll do we'll create some variables but instead of creating separate variables it's always better if we create an array so let's consider we create an array named data and the first thing what we want over here is employee name so name equal to let's consider uh name and how we store that value of name by simply saying dollar rows and name of our field and name of the field is uh, employee name is it proper yes uh, then similarly we require data name uh, after name what we have uh, base pay now so let's consider uh, base pay over here as dollar rows and the field one is a field name is a uh, base pay we need to be a little bit uh, cautious over here as the name of the fields it consists of both uppercase and lowercase uh, alphabets and your error over here it your complete page uh, gets uh, shows the error and then over pay let's consider something like this it consists of uh, rows and over here let's say it's over time pay and finally we require uh, okay this one more attribute name of that attribute is other pay okay so let's take that variable as well data uh, other pay equal to dollar rows other pay and last attribute of this file is total pay dollar data total equal to dollar rows total pay now we have stored uh, this value in array called data okay it's again a single dimensional array and uh, we want this uh, data to be sent back so let's consider we use something uh, echo uh, dollar data let's see So let's refresh and uh, something okay we don't want for something written over here some mistake warnings log something like this hold on <coughs> yeah 
here it should be in double quotes let me cross check where id equal select and start from employee where id equal to okay okay this part is getting executed anything getting displayed in console uh, nothing uh, because we have we have used a json data type so uh, let's change this and uh, we send the data as json underscore encode and the data which we are encoding is nothing but data okay uh, wait a minute a sort of an error let me include this statement if any error it should uh, it will display over there employee name base p overtime p other p let's cross check Just a second. Uh, let me remove some of the stuff from here. ID fetch em oh URL I have given the wrong URL is fetch employee dot php. So uh, refresh this because name of the file is fetch employee dot php. Okay, nothing getting displayed any error uh, hold on let me put once again fetch employee.php method is post data data type uh, okay function that's right uh, let me check once um, Uh, document dot get element by id let's consider for base dot value equal to data uh, data what's the name what we are given uh, data dot base p i think that's what we are looking over here base p let me check the source as well if there is any error okay uh, success we are getting but uh, just a second just hold on for a minute okay the error over here was uh, i written base but it wasn't the base the name of this id is basic okay so we continue let's consider we go with this again we are having three step over there uh, basic pay then second one is over pay that is over uh, another attribute what we have is uh, other so let us add other and one more thing we require that is related to total so that total attribute name is over here itself is total okay and corresponding uh, field names over here base pay we are done over pay is remaining so over base pay replaces with over pay next other pay replace that along other last uh, total pay replace it over here okay let's save this and now refresh i think employee name is pending no so that can be done okay we get it 
so whatever the data uh, we are having that data is getting fetched okay so name is remaining that name we can have uh, how i forgot the name okay we have written over here name so let's copy this one more thing and add it okay so for basic uh, for name we are given the id as em oh some mistake over here I rename this okay so emp name so name i copy this and declare it over here name and here oh wait are down name okay so now let's refresh this once again yes but uh, again one thing we are finding that uh, this uh, they are not first of all these are uh, this is this is editable text so this thing should not happen okay and secondly uh, look we are getting uh, this is uh, what there in the database we don't want for for this many decimal places max decimal places should be two or we should display everything with two and secondly that this should not be editable okay now let's do one by one first thing is we want everything up to two decimal places so we can change over here uh, we'll change that by using a number format function number format and uh, to this we'll pass what we want to format and up to how many variables or up to how many decimals so up to two decimals similarly over here number format uh let's cut this and let it paste inside this up to two decimals third one is number format and others pay again up to two decimal places and last uh, total pay uh, let me cut this straight way number format up to two decimal places so if we refresh this now this is for eight we are having for so much things now let's go with this look it's coming properly yeah everything we are getting is up to two decimal places but now secondly is uh, not secondly the lastly uh, this is getting editable we don't have to happen this so what we can do is you can either set uh, as uh, read only at the start uh, this uh, we can add the property read only to this uh, text fields or else what we can do we'll uh, do that after fetching the result over here after fetching the result uh, we will uh, set that uh, enable property to be false okay so that part uh, I think uh, we can go like this uh, document dot get element by ID so let's consider first one is EMP name uh, dot set attribute and it's read only and value is I think with this it should work so let me save it uh, EMP name right now we are able to access it uh, okay it is accessible editable but after setting this now it's not editable okay similarly we can do the same thing for others so let me copy this and uh, how many attributes we are having okay one for basic uh, second for overtime third for other and we require one more no, for total so copy this and let us write for total 
so on uh, initially while you load the page all fields are editable okay uh, but after once you change it thereafter these fields will become non editable so even if you want to change it you can't change it okay so now the next step is what we will do uh, most probably we'll, uh, we'll do that in our next session uh, we'll add a uh, two buttons one edit and second update on editing these fields will become editable and after, and on clicking update uh, whatever the value we change is those values will be updated in your database so what we can do over there uh, after this table or let's consider on the next row let me add this those two buttons and then uh, we'll continue the next in the next uh, session let's consider over here i keep one row empty no, not require one row over here uh, let's say we have uh, we keep two buttons i think the position is not proper Uh, let's say I keep one button uh, just yeah, adjacent yeah. to select uh, named AD uh, button uh, let's consider edit and uh, let's say on click it's a button no? so we need to go for the event on click uh, now um, edit details let's consider this the name of the function so we need we must add this uh, function edit details in our uh, javascript file so let's consider over here after function fetch emp let's consider we add another function uh, edit over here okay let me refresh this page uh, have I haven't I saved this? Yes, I have saved. Button should be there in the first column. Uh, yeah, I think that was, I haven't saved. So I'll select this. Uh, everything is non editable. Okay. And uh, another button is update. Okay. So update also, what I will do, I will uh, add it here only. So update, let's consider we add some additional space over here. So for spacing again we need to go the for the same m percent and b s p okay so let me see i keep some space okay and over here we'll keep another button and name of that button will be update update and after details let's consider name of another function is update details so we'll add another function in the javascript file named as update buttons function update details okay now to uh, on edit what should happen over here is uh, this thing should become editable okay so there's only one small function name of that function is uh, the way we are uh, to make it read only what we did we use the property set attribute now to remove a read only we'll use a remove attribute okay for example let me uh, do okay let's finish this part here only so because other part is a little bigger we'll do it in another uh, session uh, get element by id let's consider its uh, uh, emp name dot uh, a remove attribute okay attribute which we want to remove is a read only okay emp name now let's consider something like this okay uh, why this page is not getting updated uh, haven't I said auto save is off yeah that's why that is the issue okay no issues now everything will be updated we got update over here okay so let's consider like this 
if I look into this, it's non editable. But the moment I click on this edit, oh, everything is getting removed. Anyways, we'll uh, solve up with this issue in the next session. I hope you have liked the videos. In that case, if you have liked, then uh, kindly hit like and subscribe. Thank you.